redeem a king. To whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's reign. Hallelujah. All glory, thou and honor to thee, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's reign. Hosanna, save us, save us. That's what it means. Made sweet, save us, save us. Every one of us come needing to be delivered from something. Every one of us. Scripture said if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. Won't you pray with me? We come singing Hosanna, O God, as praise and worship to you, but indeed it does mean save us, save us. Because, O God, you are the only one who can save us from ourselves, save us from all the other things that call us and hold us in bondage. We come to you because there's no other place for us to go but to you. It is in you that we find peace. It is in you that we find joy. It is in you that we find hope. And so we come. And in this moment of, of worship, oh God, we listen for a word from you. So help me, Father. Touch me again with your powerful touch. Remove from me those things that get in the way in this moment. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, O oh God, be acceptable in your sight. For indeed you are our strength and our And so we come this Palm Sunday singing Hosanna. And I would like to talk with you for a brief moment this morning from the theme, Ain't Nothing But a Praise Party. And I have to confess to you that I borrowed this theme from three grown men. And some of you may have heard their rap CD in nothing but the Holy Ghost party that we played here in the sanctuary at different times. So today we are going to say in nothing but a praise God party. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I believe that is what happened on the road to Jerusalem. You see, Scripture said that they were rejoicing and praising God for all the mighty acts that they had seen. Amen? Amen. You know, when God does something in your life, you can't help but praise God, right? Amen. I mean, there are some of us who are very quiet in the way we praise, but somehow or the other you praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're anything like me, you can't wait to tell somebody else what God is. I know Sister Gondi, like, look how good God is, right? Amen. You know, because we want to show others just how good God has been, not specifically just to us, but how good God is, period. Who God is. Amen. So I believe that that's what was happening on the road to Jerusalem that day when they were taking clothes off and putting in Jesus' path and putting palm branches or free branches in the path of the donkey. They were having a praise God party, whether they knew it or not. Amen? Amen. She, it was her 70th birthday. She had made an appointment to see her pastor that day, forgetting that that was her birthday. She called the pastor the day before and she said, Pastor, I can't see you.
tomorrow. The pastor asked why she said, because it is my birthday. The pastor said, okay, then why don't you come to see me and then we will go to lunch. She said, no, pastor, I don't want to be with anyone but God. She said, I am going to stay in my house. I'm going to put on my music from the time I wake up. And I'm going to have a party with God until I go to bed. A few days later when she came to see the pastor, the pastor said to her, so how was the party? She said, Pastor, I've never had such a good birthday party. We had a good time. The pastor asked, we who? She said, I told you I was spending the day with God. God and I had a good time. I praised God from the moment I woke up until I went to bed. When my children came home and questioned what I was doing, I told them to be quiet, go to their room, leave me alone. I'm having a good time with God. They didn't understand. But pastor, it's my 70th birthday. Pastor said, yeah. I understand it's your 70th but She goes, no, you don't understand. You see, I was not supposed to be here. I was born with a heart murmur. The doctors didn't even think I would make it to one year old, let alone 70. I was sickly growing up. Many times they thought that I was gone. She said, one time I laid in the hospital and they were ready, doctors were ready to pull the plug. Everything was, I was ready to go. I wasn't supposed to be here, Pastor. 70 years, you don't understand. I have seen God's mighty acts, and all I want to do is have a party with God. That's what God has done for me. And while people may not understand, when I tell them I don't want to be with them, I just want to be left alone with God. God knows from where he has brought me. And I don't care if they don't understand because God and I know. God's mighty acts in my life. And I'm not wondering about all the things that have been true. Because scripture says, don't worry about the former things. I'm doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? Pastor, God continues to do new things in my life. And I can't help but be thankful. When God reveals that power in your life, you can't help but rejoice. You can't help but praise God. That's what was happening on the road to Jerusalem. Many of them had seen the powerful miracles that Jesus performed. Many of them were healed. I'm sure blind Bartimaeus was someplace in the crowd singing hallelujah because he received his sight. The woman with the issue of blood was someplace there saying, I remember when the doctors had given me up. When no one else could do anything for me, as we heard last week. But all I had to do was touch him. And with that power, now we know <coughs> the context in which all this is happening, that all these miracles have taken place, but they're still looking for someone who would liberate them from the oppression of Rome. If God, through Jesus, has done all these mighty acts, surely now God is going to do the one last thing. Redeem us from Rome. They had the wrong type of redemption, in mind. But indeed, 
Hosanna, save us. That's what God was doing through Jesus. And so they partied and they sang and they praised God. Because that's what we do when we, God has touched us and we rejoice. I'm sure Martha and Mary probably dragged Lazarus out and said, Jesus is going to Jerusalem, get up, let's go. And as men would be, I'm not going to be them, never mind. I'm sure Lazarus was up and rest and ready to go. Hallelujah. Remembering that Jesus brought him back to life from beyond the grave. So there were many people in that gathering shouting these praises. You know when someone has touched you in a certain way, there is nothing too good for them. Do you have anyone in your life where you would do just about anything for that person? Just about anything. You would take your last dollar you would take your coat off without even thinking about it because they have touched you in such a way. And for many of us, that's who God is. That there isn't anything we will not do. That there isn't any praise we will not give because as we often say, indeed God is worthy to be praised. They took sang their hosannas because he was worthy. What are you singing today? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is this one that comes to your life today? What are you singing? They sang, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. The, this echoes from his birth. Remember what the angel sang? Peace on earth and glory in the highest heaven. And here again we have that echo. 33 years later. And you know there's always somebody who wants you to stop praising God. Amen. I'll say it again. They may not come up and say it that way. But there's always somebody around you who wants you to stop praising God. Now if you ask them, they will deny it. But watch their behavior. They get in the way. That's another preaching in another day. <laughs> but they get in the way. They say things about you. They talk about all you do is talk about God. That like God is yours alone. I have to tell one of my girlfriends, I don't know about God being mine alone. But I know who God is to me. And I pray that God is the same to you. Shall you Caesar sings a song, Hold My Mule? Hmm. Many of you may have heard it. It's about a man. Yesterday, as we, after we laid our cousin to rest, we gathered for lunch. And one of my cousin's wife asked, she's now coming into ministry and asked me about my call to ministry and I was sharing it with her. And I talked about being away from the church. She said, well, when you came back to church, because I grew up in the Anglican church, she said, when you came back to church, did you come back the same way? I said, of course not. I came back on fire because something happened that brought me back to church. So I came back to church rejoicing. And she said, well, Anglican Church, which is the Episcopal Church. I said, no, I happened so that I didn't come back to the Anglican Church. I came back to the United Methodist Church. 
Crawford, if you will, that church. And she said, well, what was it like? I said, I came in and the pastor was preaching and I was just so happy in the Lord. I was praised the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She said, well, what did he say? I said, I realized people were looking at me. People were turning and looking. And there was only, she said, well, did it bother you? I said for a minute, but then the pastor said something else that rang true in my life, and I said, hallelujah. And in the distance back, there was one other lady that I would hear who says sometimes, amen. She said, well, what happened? I said, no, if you go to Crawford, I said, I don't know about today, but when I left, if you went to Crawford, you would know it was the same church because people were rejoicing. People, I'm not saying they weren't rejoicing before, but they were vocally rejoicing. They did not think it robbery to praise God by saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, I know from whence you have brought me. So I give you praise and thanks, oh God, because without you I wouldn't be here. Lord, I thank you for the healing this week. They had come to a different place. Shirley Caesar sings this song called Oh My New. And it goes, the story goes that this man belonged to this church. This man was an older man in his 80s and 90s. And he used to get happy in church, shouting and praising God. So they sent a delegation out to his home to talk to him about the noise that he makes in church. And when they pulled up, <coughs> he was in the field with his mule. And they came over to him and they said, I want to Brother Jones, that they sent us out here to talk to you about all this racket you made in church. <laughs> So he said, racket, he they said, yes. You're making people uncomfortable. They don't like it when you shouting at the top of your voice, saying hallelujah, saying thank you, Jesus, saying praise the Lord. It makes them even more uncomfortable when you start tapping your feet. And every now and then you get up and you do that dance, and they just don't like you. So, Brother Jones, if you can't control yourself, we are going to have to ask you not to come to our church. <laughs> Brother Jones said to them, you don't want me to come to your church? You don't want me to come to your church? He said, you don't want me to praise the Lord? You don't want me to say thank you, Jesus? You don't want me to say hallelujah? You don't want me to sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Well, do me a favor. Hold my new because I'm going to do it right here. Hallelujah. You see, there's all this God who will try to steal that joy away from you. But Jesus said to those who wanted, who said, please tell them to stop. He said, if they are silent, the stones will cry out. I don't want any stone to cry out for me. I want to praise the Lord with every fiber of my name. When I sing that song, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, that I feel it in the depth of my stomach. Yes. That every part of my body, every muscle, is praising God. Yes. That it's not just something that flows from my head or my lips, because God knows from whence God has brought me. Yes. God knows the ups and downs that I've been through in life. 
The scripture says, before I was formed in my mother's womb, you knew me. You saw me as I was weaved together from the dust of the earth. God knows all that. So how could you not have a praise God? She said to me a few days ago, I'm going to celebrate that no one believes my 60th birthday, which is July this year. I said, so you have a big bash, I'm going to wait for the invitation. She said, I don't know that you want to get an invitation. I haven't decided how I'm going to celebrate that day as yet. If I make it to that day, but I think I will. I said, well, what's so special about this year? I know it's your 60th, but usually we have a big bash for, you know, those birthdays. She said, all I want you to, however I do it, it has to be in praise and thanksgiving to God. I said, why? She said, because it will be 10 years to the day I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. And I'm in my eighth year of cancer. Praise God party. She said, and every day that I wake up, I bless the Lord because I know when doctors were saying, there's very little we can do. We'll try this and see how it works, but we're not sure. She said, there's no doubt in my mind that it was the prayer warriors at my church holding me up in prayer and God answering those prayers while I'm here today. Amen. So I'm going to praise God with every fiber of my hand. The person I spoke about, 70 years, Sister Pine, you may remember her. She did not hide her testimony. She told everyone. Yes, yes. She lived her life in praise and thanksgiving to God. Because this praise God party is not a one day thing. It's not a one time thing. It's every day you get up realizing who God is in your life. From when God has brought you and lived life in thanksgiving to God. Because you see it's easy to talk. You need to walk the talk. So the praise God party that I'm talking about today is not just a one day thing. It's every morning when you open your eyes and you say, thank you, Lord, for another day. And you say, God, this is your day. I give it back to you today and we are going to have a good time in spite of everything that may or may not happen, we are going to have a good time. You know what happens when you start the day out like that? Let me tell you. People get on your nerves, right? But it's a momentary thing. Things will happen, but it's a passing thing. Because you keep remembering who God is. And you keep remembering who you are. Yes. And even though in that moment, in that second, you may have forgotten, the Spirit has a way of bringing you right back. Yes. So you may, and instead of cursing, I heard Brother Albert say, don't curse, just say, may the Lord bless you. Yes. 
Do you know what it's like when someone curses at you and you say, God bless you? Most of the times, they lost for words. I told someone the other day about a gentleman who walks his dog here in Washington Avenue. And one day, I was coming into the church and he was walking his dog and his dog did whatever. And he kept walking and I called to him to, you know, put the scoop behind your dog. You know, you need to clean that up. And he blessed me. He blessed me royally. <laughs> really, very well. And there was someone standing across the street who said to me, call the police, they're right down the street, call them. And I thought about it for a minute. But then I said, God bless you. Later on, I went outside. He had cleaned it up. And he came to my car and knocked on the window and brought it to my attention that he did clean it up. You see, it makes a difference in people's lives. They may not appreciate it at the moment, and they may walk away. But God says, my word will never return you. If I had cursed him back or called the police, it would have been and now usually half the time he's high, you know, but if he's in his right mind, he would never pass me without saying no. But he didn't do it. For me, that's another way of having a praise God for Amen. Always being ready to give a blessing Amen. to God be the Lord.